welcome back to my channel this is Alex from Alex's Innovations and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a normal pattern keychain this tutorial is mainly going to involve me showing you how to set up the strings up here because it's a little bit more complicated than setting up an alpha keychain since the order of the strings that you set up here are really really important and it's also going to allow you if you set it up correctly to have this pretty neat back right here so I'm going to show you how to get started making this tutorial I'm assuming that you are already comfortable with making a normal pattern specifically I'm going to be making an arrowhead and so this assumes that you're comfortable with the basic knots and that you've made a normal pattern bracelet before if you're not familiar with either one of those things I suggest you check out my basic knots tutorial and also some of my simpler bracelet tutorials that are available on my channel but with that out of the way I'm going to be showing you how to set up this keychain and then how to start it and then how to continue so I'm making an arrowhead this arrowhead is 14 strings which means that that's seven colors and each one is folded in half and this pattern is symmetrical, so that's really good for me because it makes setting up the strings much easier. My pattern is in a rainbow, and so I've cut one string of each color in a rainbow. I have the top part of my keychain set up here. Um, I'm just gonna call this the metal piece, <laughs> for lack of a better term, and I'll put the link to where I got these in the description. I got them on Etsy, and I believe these are the three quarter inch variants. So if you're seeing this like way in the future and this isn't available anymore, I think it's called a D swivel hook something like that because it's shaped like a D up here. So anyway, I'm gonna look at my pattern and I see that it has a symmetrical outline. So at the top, like the first string on the left is a green and the last string on the right is also a green. So I'm going to be basically working outwards in. So I'm gonna start by putting the strings outside and then working in. So I see that my first string is the green string. I have my strings folded in half. They're cut about the length of a normal bracelet and I find if I cut it any shorter, sometimes it can be hard to work with especially because we're not making this much shorter than an actual bracelet. So I'm going to pull my green string out. This is just folded in half at the midpoint, so that makes it easy for me to work with that. And then I'm going to be making what I think is called a lark's head knot, but I'm not entirely sure. So I'm going to take the loop, I'm going to stick it up through the hole in the metal piece, and then I'm going to grab the loop, and then I'm going to pull these two tail ends through. So just like that. I'm going to pull it, but I'm not going to pull it all the way, so it's, there's like this little loop that's still hanging over. And I want to separate it, and this part's really important. So I'm separating these two tails, so these two tails are sort of separated, and so there's this green piece that's sort of hanging out in the back. So that's the first step, and then we're going to try our best to keep these two pieces separated. So I'm going to put one piece over here, and one piece over here. But this is like the key, basically, you have to make sure that these are separated. And then looking at my pattern next, I can see that the next, if we go from the outside in, the next string we have is yellow. So I'm going to take my yellow string right here and it's folded in half at the midpoint. And I'm going to do the th same thing. So I'm gonna stick my yellow string up through the hole and then being careful to try and disrupt the green as little as possible, I'm gonna pull that through. And the green's sort of at the side, so that's okay, I'm gonna separate the yellow, so I'm gonna try and get that as close to separate as possible without going over the green. So right now I have green here, and then I have yellow. I'm going to repeat this, and it can get a little more complicated going inward, because there's just more string you have to worry about, so I'm gonna keep showing you. So next color we have is the light blue, so I'm gonna take my light blue, and it's not really that light of a blue, it's just lighter. I've zoomed in just so you can see a little bit, but I'm going to take the blue, and come up through like that and then bring this blue over and then kind of hold everything in place while closing it down and then separate these two blue tails so everything kind of stays in place and you should see that the middles of the other two strings are all like they're all grouped together in the middle with this D string <laughs> and we'll tighten it later so don't worry about making it too tight or too loose because we'll just take care of that later. The next color in my pattern is orange so I'm going to grab my orange string and right now it's at the middle so I'm just going to grab that middle and I'm going to go up and then bring my tails through and pull and there you go. So I'm separating it still and I'm going to separate the tails. Next color is blue so I'll take my blue again and go up and through, and then pull those tails through. And it's really important that the blue doesn't overlap with the other ones because we want everything to be pretty much perfectly in order because it's gonna be 
really hard to get that in order later. So we have these in order, and then hopefully we have room for our red and then our purple. After separating these ties, I will grab our red and sticking the red through. And pulling those ties through. Alright, and we should have enough room for the purple. <laughs> so the purple is the last one. So grabbing the purple, I'll go through the hole. And then I don't have to worry about separating this one much at all. So I'll bring the ties right through. And then I'll pull. So I'm gonna just take this off just so I can tighten everything. If you've done this right, then the order of these strings up here should directly match the order of the strings in the pattern. And so you'll know if you've done this correctly just by comparing them. And on the other side, it will be pretty neat. So you can see that there are no bars, like the bars of string, because in the middle, we've knotted over the ones from the edges. So that's okay. So your layout should look something like this. I'm gonna retape mine down and then I'll show you how to get started for the first couple of rows. So I'm just going to take a look at my pattern and I'm going to start in the middle and this method is going to be more row by row based, at least for the first couple of rows, and I'm really not a huge advocate of the row by row method. Um, it can be helpful starting out, but it just goes much faster if you do segment knotting. But I'm going to make an exception because here we're starting in a straight line and so it makes sense to kind of go row by row for the first couple of knots. So I can see I'm going to start in the middle because it's symmetrical and the first knot is these two purple strings. So I'm going to take the left one and do a double forward knot over the right one because that's what the pattern says to do and all these strings are going to come up, but that's okay. Then it says the blue string that's on the right is going to do a double backward knot over the red thread. And all of these steps are unique to the arrowhead, but I'm kind of showing you as sort of the process of if you were to put any symmetrical normal pattern onto a keychain, this is kind of how you do it. And then just looking next to my pattern, I see that the light blue string is making a double backward knot over the orange string. So I'm taking that light blue string out and making a double backward knot over the orange string. And finally, the green string that's all the way on the edge is going to do a double backward knot over the yellow string. And as you can see, this has held up pretty well so far, our layout of strings. So good thing it's working or else this tutorial would not be the greatest and then I'm gonna show you on the other side so let's start on the other side I'm just gonna mirror what we have here and also following the pattern so I can see that the dark blue string is making a double forward knot over the red string and then the light blue string is going to make a double forward knot over the orange string Then the green string is going to do a double forward knot over the yellow string. And so now we can see our arrowhead starting to take shape, even though it's not really in the correct color order up top, you can see that it starts in like the correct color order, like it starts at the darkest, which is purple, and then it goes out from there. So I'll show you how to do maybe the next couple of rows just so we can sort of get that arrowhead shape going. But I can see, starting in the middle, the next row involves having the dark blue threads get closer together in the center. So that means that this one is going to do a double forward knot over the purple thread. And then this blue thread on the right is going to do a double backward knot over the purple thread. Alright, and then the light blue thread on the right is going to do a double backward knot over the red thread. And then the green string is going to do a double backward knot over the orange thread. And I'll mirror this on the other side. We already did the dark blue thread, but I'm going to take the light blue thread and do a double forward knot over the red thread. And then the green string is going to do a double forward knot over the orange string. And when you're done with this, I'm not going to show you any more because going any farther would be 
like too specific to the pattern and you can't really generalize it and that's kind of the goal here is to generalize this for all normal symmetrical patterns. So when you're done with this you can finish off the keychain just as you would finish off a bracelet. So you can do a triangle end um, or you can do a double triangle end and I actually have tutorials for both of those in my comprehensive guide to starts and ends. And in doing that you can just cut, tie things off with an overhand knot or with another tassel of your choice. It's really up to you. And yeah, I really like this technique because it allows you to put bracelet designs onto a keychain and allows you to take that keychain wherever you want, even if you don't want to wear a bracelet that day. So if you like this video, please check out my other videos on my channel, and please like, comment, and subscribe to keep the bracelets coming. Um, and in addition, check out my Instagram, maybe, or my Etsy shop for more bracelet content. So anyway, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Bye!